Pastos, and everywhere else in the valley, all the way to Arizona. None of that area will be called a safety zone. There will be no safety zone. I can guarantee you the safety zone will be eliminated, eradicated. You will all be extradited to the land of no return. It's a navigation to nowhere. And if you think that's going to be fun, you've got another thing coming. I may be a slime bucket, but believe me, I know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm not crazy. And don't say I didn't warn you. I warned you. I warned all of you. Hi, my name is Rebecca Martin and I'm the organizer of the Chicago Film Lover Exchange. Today we're talking about Vim Vendors, Paris, Texas, which came out in 1984. This is part three of our three parts, so this will be our final part. Um, and we're going to be talking about the road trip aspect of the film, um, just, you know, the journey we go on and the experience and what the road trip means and all that. So I'm going to let Al get us started. Well, this is a really fascinating movie um, because it's very much a road movie, mm -hmm. and yet it's kind of almost shows how ineffective roads can be. <laughs> like, all these different environments show roads where, like, the characters are only on them part of the time. Mm -hmm. Like, from, like, the from like the very beginning, it, like, shows no road whatsoever, and yet yep. Travis, like, walks in a perfectly straight line. It's mm -hmm. almost like he doesn't need a paved road. It's a road in his head. Right. And, and... It's, and the, yet the sense of direction is so different in all the different sequences. Mm -hmm. Like the, the desert is like nice and horizontal and flat and you have the horizon. And then when it gets to Los Angeles, things start getting curvy. Mm -hmm. There gets bumpy. You don't, you don't see where the end of the road is. Right. right. And then by the time you get to Houston, it's like almost all vertical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> almost, all, almost all the uh, direction is going going up and uh, down. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, it really lends me a really interesting to see how like the movements of the characters match with the movements of the places that they have to travel through. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, something I uh, I was gonna say. Um, I think we should talk about the communication on the road trips because I think that that says a lot about what's going on in each part of the film. Like the the first part, as you know. Walt, or I'm sorry, not Walt, Travis is mute. He, he's just, you know, he's, he's not speaking, even though he's there, but he's not, you know. Um, so, Mary. Yes, um, he starts out, um, wander, we see him first wandering in the desert in, in a, uh, uh, an, an environment in, in, in which reminded me of the great immensity of geological time and how his wandering made him seem displaced from that. Mm -hmm. And then he continues, as he... Uh, rejoins civilization and uh, comes up in meets up with the doctor and then um, his bro he finds his brother and uh, he's mute but there are signs that he's slowly coming back to life when he yeah. first when he first meets meets his brother um, on the road the, f the first sign of communication we get from him is a nod toward his brother yeah and um, and then the first words he uttered the first word he utters is Paris uh, and he doesn't say which Paris, he just says Paris. But that Paris is, the, the first thing that he communicates is the source of all of his hope and desires that he's going to throw himself into mm -hmm. in, in his new journeys. And right. His, and his journeys also uh, reminded me a little bit of the um, American ideal of manifest destiny and how he, as he uh, travels uh, to and from his manifest destiny is to rejoin his family again. Interesting. Shannon, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, um, I was really reminded of um, kind of like a child's game, um, child's adventure, um, because in the first part of the travel, we see him more communicating with adults like Walt and Anne, mm -hmm. and he just doesn't get it. Um, Walt was like, uh, you know, like, Hunter has been with us for four years, we're kind of like a family, but yeah. he doesn't really get it at all. Uh -huh. um, however, when he comes to kind of communicating with Hunter, it's a whole different story. It's like, you know, um, mm -hmm. at one point they were talking 
on the walkie-talkie. Yeah. And he was like, you see, this is not just a game. It's not just a toy. It's actually very useful. Yeah, <laughs> and it's then, very useful. Um, also, the chasing was uh, chasing Jane's Jane. car. Because um, at first, when I watched it, I felt like it's kind of very random constructed because um, Hunter sees his profile of a woman and just, you know, he has to look sure. at the, the picture, the yeah. thing, whatever. Yeah. But still, it's like a profile of a woman yeah. that could or could not be his mother. Um, and they just started chasing, and there's two cars, and they're like, which one is the left one? So I like, know, it's, 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 it's very, yeah, yeah, it's very like a child's game. It's like, um, I'm guessing it's the right one, let's go and chase it, that kind right. of thing. It's not planned out, it's not adult-like. Right. Um, his, his hunter instincts are really strong in that scene. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. um, and it's and it's also interesting in how like he's it's almost like Travis like can almost express things by his direction like how Mary, how Mary was saying the nod in and of itself is a direction no right. and and like the moment of the first real moment of solid connection between Hunter and, and Travis on that level is that wonderful sequence where they're walking down uh, where they're walking yeah. down the street mm -hmm. and and um, to me that's just such a great expression that of how involves a road exactly it yep. involves a road that's mm -hmm. That's it's that super curved, curved. They're both following each other, but they have to keep a distance, right? And then, and then in just this really marvelous example of what a you know how a film can express things, like mm -hmm. it has Hunter in the middle of the road, and then as he turns, like his bread backpack like shines up like a beacon in the center of the screen, and then Travis rejoins it, and it's right. just such a great emotional connection, showing about how roads link people, mm -hmm. right? And and then set and then set them apart as well. Right. What about there's there's quite a bit of, of distance between mm -hmm. um, not just like Travis and his son, and even when they're connecting, like when uh, Hunter is sleeping on uh, yeah. Travis in mm -hmm. the car, and mm -hmm. he like pushes him away when he's when he's asleep, so he like right. doesn't realize that he's doing it. And then the, the next time we see him, he's in the back on the walkie-talkie with his back to Travis. I, I almost think that part where their hunter is like sleeping on him is actually kind of a closeness. Like I I I, I mean yeah he moved, but I think it was so he could drive. <laughs> you know like I mean that's how I saw it. But uh, I I think the walkie talkie parts are like probably the most intimate, and then in the sense of like in their relationship, just because you know what they're talking about and um, how he's curious about the speed from L.A. to Houston, and it just, this kid is well, smart, you know, so, but, go ahead. The other uh, intimate conversation yeah. that, that's had is between Jane and um, Travis, mm -hmm. and they're also back-to-back -back on, a, on a telephone. Oh, yeah, so, that's true, yeah, that's, the, the, the one time where there's, it seemed to me that there were no distances was in that uh, family uh, movie, which was also a, mm -hmm. a road trip in their in their RV trailer. That's when they're affectionate with each other. That's when we see them hugging each other. That's the that's the only time, and it seemed like a golden halcyon time that that uh, Travis clung to and uh, desperately wanted to recreate. That was the only point in the movie I could. T uh, uh, also, as as to what you mentioned too, uh, uh, sleeping in the um, truck, but that. That was the only time where they they just seemed to demonstratively demonstratively show their affection toward each other. Yeah, and yeah, isn't definitely. it isn't it yeah. super cool how like it's how like that scene on the beach? It's it's so right that it's on an R it's on an RV. Like yeah. that's the whole um, part of the idea of road movies is that like yes the road is continuing on and you're mm -hmm. on it and you're traveling on it. At, you know, maybe a different rate of speed from other people, but you're always kind of on it. So it's super. So it's super cool that they're that they have the RV and that they're also at a beach with a wide blue right. sky. And it, I guess, to me, it kind of shows that they have at that moment they have a level of a limitless horizon, mm -hmm. a horizon which has like po possibilities and affection and and a great family relationship at that right. moment. And the the fact that you ha have a horizon to see. Is a, is a kind of important component of it. And, that's, and also that's the first time we get some insight into Jane's character. We see her, she's a, we see her finally as a free spirit, uh, a, a, and, and um, almost an indefatigable free spirit. We see mm -hmm. her dancing freely uh, by herself, and I, I just wondered how that free spirit's going to 
was going to play out in the rest of the film. Right. What an interesting contrast to see at the mm -hmm. end, right? Mm -hmm. yes. You could totally think that like she's trapped in that situation in so mm -hmm. in so many ways. Right. Like like um, Travis is all movement but no direction, right? And and she's like found this she's locked in this place and how much of it is even like the kind of ideal situation that Travis would have wanted to right. think her to be in, right? Yeah, and I, I want to get it back to the, the road and the trip part because I think that's um, pretty important in the sense of like the construction of the film. Mm -hmm. Like if you were going to look at it, um, I would say part one is Walt and Travis and their trip. And then it goes to... Uh, I guess, L yeah, L.A., when they're in L.A., and then, and then to Houston. And what I'm interested in is, like, those four years when Travis was just traveling, walking around, how do you think that influenced the construction of the linear story, if that makes sense to you guys? Um, well, I, th I think for four years he was wandering, sort of lost and, and, right. and displaced from time. Mm -hmm. And I think the road, tr the road trip with Walt, I think Walt uh, serves as a facilitator in um, uh, uh, Travis slowly, as he progresses, slowly coming back to life, mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. to connecting with relationships, even though he's physically distant, he still um, is attempting to connect, but, but never completely. It seems like mm -hmm. you know, in, in his communications, you know, it isn't. Yeah, all, it gets better, but not. You yeah, know. yeah, not not very often are his communications directly face to face. Right, mm -hmm. Shannon. Yeah, I was thinking that um, somehow every time he's in a car, his well, maybe not with the wall part, but yeah. um, he was in a uh, trailer with Jane before the fiasco right, happened. Right. Um, and then he's traveling back to Texas to where kind of all the story is happening um, mm -hmm. in a car um, with Walt. And I'm guessing, this is no basis at all, but I'm guessing that afterwards he's going to travel somewhere in a car by himself as well. Yeah, and I, I'm actually pretty curious about what that next trip is going to be, you know, but that'll be another movie. So, yeah. um, mm -hmm. Dave, what are your thoughts? Um, it, it's, it's interesting, the, as much linearity as there is, and the, the road trip is very linear, too, as, as mm -hmm. we've discussed. Yep. And it's just, and the red dots all the way along, like a right. marking their path along the map as he goes oh, on yeah. his journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but they're always coming back. It's like... I'm going away to Mexico, I'm going away to LA, but I'm coming back to Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a, a, a simultaneous, um, you know, he, he, along the road he's on a vector moving forward to create his new life, but simultaneously he, emotionally he regresses to the past because he's trying to recreate uh, this uh, uh, fantasy, family, fantasy mm -hmm. his, mm -hmm. his family once had, and so it's like there's a simultaneous vector going forward, but still yeah, and mentally I, and emotionally hanging, clinging to the past. Right. I mean, I think this movie is all about reconstruction because he's totally broken in the beginning. Um, he doesn't remember anything, it seems, mm -hmm. which I, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to get into that. But the whole movie just seems like we're putting Travis back together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're getting him <laughs> ready nice. for the next trip. Like, the next trip is where he's going places. This trip is for him to s remember what's important, get the people he loves back together. You know, it's, and I, I think he, this film is like that um, transition from, you know, um, his purpose, what he's trying to do. And I think road trips do that a lot. Like, when you, I, I know when I take trips, it puts everything in a different perspective. And, you know, that part when he's with Walt, with the, um, putting the, what are those billboard? signs that are over there? Yeah, billboard, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, and he's like, oh, this is just a different perspective. Like, my fear <laughs> yes. is falling, but everything's so much more clear up here. It, it, yeah. it needs to be noted that, like, very very often the billboards provided a commentary, often quite sarcastic about it, like like at that very moment where he's saying, hey, this brings a new perspective, I believe the sign behind him says sharp. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's good, yeah. yeah. That's funny. Um, 
And I just didn't understand why Walt was so giving, you know, in the sense like, take all my credit cards, take my child away, you know? Mm -hmm. It just seemed kind of, that, there were some parts where I was like, that doesn't exactly make sense, but it's a good movie, so yeah. I, I sort of saw Walt as a facilitator in, in Travis's um, Return to Civilization. I also saw Walt Mann as sort of a, a, sim, a symbolism of sort of the ideal uh, brother and, and the uh, French wife that Walt and Travis's father had uh, um, sort of fantas Paris. yeah fantasized mm -hmm. about. And, and, you know, Walt actually had this... Uh, French, yeah. French wife that uh, his his father had uh, mm -hmm. dreamed of, and and I just I just saw and also I also saw Walt Mann as sort of symbols of 1983 Ronald Reagan uh, upper middle class mm -hmm. um, uh, sweet uh, American couple. They're very American, very LA American. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, they, and their home was on a hill looking down. Yes, mm -hmm. at the right. San Fernando Valley. It's so the movie's so effective when it gets to Los Angeles. It's showing how like Travis is a little bit trapped in their situation. Like they're in a you know, like in the sequence where he arrives at their house. It's uh, it does this really weird like geometrical trick where as they're driving, the whole LA landscape looms up behind them. You can't see the, see the sky at all. And then they get to the other side of the house, and the other side of the LA landscape is looms behind them. Mm -hmm. Like, he's literally in a rut in that well, area. And then even when they're in the house, uh, you have Travis standing like on, on the wall past the staircase, and the other two are in the other room. Mm -hmm. so there's like a, a separation there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all them. about um, perspective. Mm -hmm. you know? um, yes, and then there was something I was going to say about uh, perspective, but it Anyways, the, um, the sequence I just went on to add, like in yeah. talking on perspective, when when Hunter and Travis finally have that emotional reunion in the yeah. center of the road, if you look at like the house in the back, it's almost like some suburban M.C. Escher painting because the houses are all like here and here and all like above right. it. And and even when Travis is looking at the um, at the um, plane. The plane is below yeah. him. <laughs> Everything's kind of topsy turvy for a guy who's been only been going straight on a <laughs> up until that point. Right, and those binoculars. I mean, I I think that's cool how he always uses them. And um, I want to bring this up when he is just walking that night before he decides to go, or he's decided to go see Jane, but the night before he takes the trip, mm -hmm. um, he walks across the highways. Yes. And yes. and there's this crazy dude who's yelling all these profanities and all this mm -hmm. stuff, and. That is just so, it's like I, an out-of-place scene, but it seems pretty important I, I, still. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I saw him walking across the bridge um, as, as a point of no return for his character. Mm -hmm, uh, and that yes. he, was, he was totally committed to this new uh, vector that he was going to take in reuniting mm -hmm. his family. And the rancher on the bridge, I thought, was sort of a classic Sam Shepard polemic on society. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also thought it augured ill for the outcomes mm -hmm. that... Uh, Travis maybe would um, endure. maybe that was like him saying goodbye to his previous self. Like this is what I could have yeah. become yep. if I wasn't on this this new path. That's why journey. I was so empathetic right. towards he, the he guy. Gave him mm -hmm. the nice, yeah. yeah, and it's also like framed in a way where like you hear the person's ranting before you see him. Like mm -hmm. you see Travis walking for a good distance, so you're left unclear. Maybe these are like the thoughts that were like going through Travis's head as he's as he's making this trek across the bridge. Right. You know? And it's just the fact that like Travis's journey and the journey of so many of the other people on the highway are literally at cross purposes, right? Mm -hmm. It just kind of reminds me of like a like an like an Irish phrase which is called like a uh, Irish greetings like may the road rise to meet you and I take I take that yeah. and I take that to mean that like the idea is that may you have a smoother path a smoother journey uh -huh. and I think one of the themes that really resonates for me about Paris Texas is how much Travis accepts or doesn't accept the roads that are and the roads that follow like uh -huh. when he meets up with Walt the road literally meets it because Travis is walking through the yeah, desert that's and, true. The, and the road approaches him at an angle and that's where they meet up yeah that's that's very interesting well um, that's also um, that's how Walt usually does meet Travis he's always intersecting <laughs> right not, not necessarily following along the same path right but mm -hmm. like intersecting him at points 
Yeah, right. Like cool. the first, is in fact the first image I think we see of Walt is like he's right behind the background and the background is these really sharp diagonals. Mm -hmm. So it's always something that, the, that Travis is not going to be able to kind of relate to, which I right. think ties into the idea on the walkie talkies and mm -hmm. in the peep show about his kind of communication. It seems to me that like Travis can walk straight. He definitely is always dedicated to walking straight, but he can't communicate in a straight right. manner. He always has to like just turn away. And like even when he meets Walt, he starts talking when he goes to the back seat. <laughs> he can't right. engage in the same front seat as, as Walt yeah. in, that, in that moment. This was a great discussion, and thank you all participants, and thank you part threeers, and uh, we'll see you for the next film discussion. Hi, thanks for watching.